Hi folks, it's good to be with you today. We're going to just talk about uh, evidence for the crucifixion. Um, in Islam, uh, the Quran talks about that Jesus did not die. That it seemed as if he died. Um, it says in Surah uh, 1933, Jesus speaks as an infant and says, So peace be upon him the day I was born, the day that I die, and the day I shall be raised up to life. Even in the Quran, Jesus predicts his death. A few verses earlier in Surah 1915, the same statement is made concerning Prophet Yahya. So peace is on him the day he was born, the day that he dies, and the day he will be raised to life again. If Surah 19 and 15 speaks of his death of Yahya, Yahya, Yahya then Surah 1935 must speak of the death of Isa, son of Miriam. In Surah 1931, Jesus also quoted the saying, And he had made me a blessing, moreover I be, and hath adjoined on me prayer and charity as long as I live. If Jesus never died according to this ayah, he is obligated still to continue in zakat, an absurd notion, since he is seated in heaven with God. So what we see here is, there are there is a verse that says that Jesus did not die, yet these verses in the Quran contradict other verses in the Quran and give indication that Jesus did die. But the strongest evidence that Jesus died and proves that Islam is incorrect is the Quran itself, Surah 5, 157 says, they said we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them, and those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow surely they killed him not. So here there is a categorical statement that Jesus did not die. Again, contradicting other verses in the Quran. But now we have strong evidence to show that the Quran is incorrect. In Matthew 27, 35, then they crucified him, Jesus. In Mark 15, 24, and when they crucified him, Luke 23, 30, 33, and when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. John 19, 23, then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments. We see that the Bible account in the Gospels, Jesus Christ was crucified. Now, Mike, I just want to ask you, which is the earliest document historically? Yeah, if you'd like to come in, Mike. Yeah. Mike, I'd like to ask you, which is the earliest document historically? Is it the Quran or the Gospels? Gospels. The Gospels, and how, how early are the Gospels, would you say? I would say within 30 years of Christ's death, we have the, the accounts of Jesus written down. Um, prior to that, we had oral tradition, so these stories are well known, but it was 30 years later that we see them written down on, on scrolls, and there you go, it's, it's very early. Wow, wow. So I'd like to just give you some thoughts here, and you tell me what you think. It says uh, a centurion, an officer of 100, over 100 men, guarded Jesus as he died on the cross, Matthew 27, 54. It says Roman soldiers beat Jesus, sat and watched him die, Matthew 27, 27, verse 36. And chief priests, scribes and elders all watched Jesus die in Matthew 27, 41. Many unnamed women who Jesus had known watched him die, Matthew 27, 55. These are eyewitnesses. Are the Gospels based on eyewitnesses? They are indeed, yeah. Uh, all and, of them, yeah. And is the Quran based on eyewitnesses that Jesus never died? Not at all. It was written after Jesus, 600 years later, with no witnesses. With no corroborating wow. evidence. Jesus never lived in Saudi Arabia. And he never came from where Muhammad lived. It's like, um, it's like getting a story, it's like getting eyewitness statements about Abraham Lincoln and his life in America, written in America. Yeah, and some yeah, rights yeah. in Japan. Oh, by the way, it never happened. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it just goes against the whole concept. If we can't learn anything from history, then we have to disregard history. We cannot rely on something written so many, so many years later that contradicts so many people's uh, testimonies. So we have to trust the Gospels. Uh, and they are trustworthy. In John chapter 19, 25, 27, it says, Now they're stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Madeleine, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciples took her 
to his own home, John 19, 25, 27. So here, family, family are seeing Jesus die and testify to it. Exactly. So we've got solid eyewitness. Now, I'd like to just ask you a question. Do you know of any evidence outside the Bible that confirms the eyewitnesses that Jesus died on the cross and that contradict the Quran and that a stronger evidence if we could move closer just to yeah, yeah. It, it, and and uh, have you any evidence or do we have any evidence outside the Bible that proves the Bible is correct about Jesus dying and the Quran is incorrect correct we do yes we have the Roman historian is it Tacitus Tacitus yes yes uh, we also have a Jewish historian called Josephus yes, okay, yes. and they speak about the sage Jesus being crucified and Christians meeting on a certain day and singing songs to Jesus. Um, so we do have evidence outside the Bible. Uh, Roman crucifixion was a well-known method of, of execution in those days. Wow. So well-known. Wow. It wasn't something new. It was the most cruelest and it was for the most barbaric of crimes. Wow. Now, according wow. to the Jews, Jesus had to die because he made himself equal with God. That's blasphemy, wow. according to wow. the Jews. So they called him a blasphemer, a deceiver, and all kinds of names. So Jesus was deserving of death according to the Jewish law, according to their law. They didn't know who he was. We know who he was. Wow. Um, Muslims say Jesus never died, and all this stuff. They deny the crucifixion and resurrection. Uh, the resurrection is a different topic, but um, Jesus' body was in the tomb. How could they have got past all these legions of soldiers? Yeah. I'd love to see Islam explain that. So Mike mentioned uh, Cornelius Tacitus, Roman historian, 55 to 120 AD. This respected Roman historian had disdain for Christians, calling them believers in a most mischievous superstition. Nevertheless, Tacitus confirmed that this sect was formed from the followers of Christus who suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of Pontius Pilate. The term extreme penalty refers to crucifixion, the most extreme form of punishment used during the Roman Empire. We have Lucian of Samosa, 115-200 AD, a well-known satirist and lecturer. Lucian refers to Christians as poor wretches and foolish people who accepted such things as faith alone without evidence. He also calls them one who worshipped the man in Palestine who was crucified because he brought new form of initiation into the world. Lucian further mocks Christians for believing that they are all brothers the moment they transgress and deny the Greek gods and begin worshipping that crucified sophist and living by his laws. That's amazing. And then you have Thalus in 55 AD, an ancient historian who wrote a three volume history of volume three. Uh, Thalus mentions the darkness that occurred at the death of Jesus just as recorded in Matthew 27, 45, Mark 15, 33, and Luke 23, 44. Thalus certainly was no friend of Christians and he attempted to attribute the darkness to solar eclipse, a natural phenomenon rather than an miracle as scripture tradition proclaimed. Now, I want to just say this, we've looked at the historical evidence, we've looked at eyewitnesses, well, we've looked at the Quran, how the Quran contradicts itself, it says Jesus died and then it says he didn't die. We've looked at the eyewitnesses, both enemies and family of Jesus, say that he died. We've looked at strong historical evidence and we haven't covered all that evidence. You mentioned Josephus yeah. and if we went into Josephus scholarship, which we could do, yeah. that would be even monumental more evidence to prove that Jesus died yeah. on the cross. Now what I want to just mention now is this. It says in Matthew 16, 21, from that time on Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and be killed and be raised on the third day. Matthew 17, 22, 23 says Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is about to be betrayed in the hands of men and they will kill him. On the third day he will be raised up. And Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be, be served but to serve and to give his life for a ransom for many. And then Luke 18, 31 to 33, then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all the things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished, for he will be delivered to the Gentiles, and they will scourge him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. What I'd like to say to you, brother, is these are references, especially Luke 18, 31, 33, that Jesus our Lord is saying, My death was prophesied, and my resurrection was prophesied 
in Old Testament scripture. Do you want to elaborate on that, brother? Yes, there's many references in the Old Testament. Can you, can you come in here? Yeah, there's, uh, there's many references in the Old Testament about the death of Jesus and his burial. Uh, for example, Psalm 53 talks about where he's going to be buried in the rich man's tomb, which is Joseph of Arimathea. Is it Arimathea? Yeah. He's yeah. going to be buried in a rich man's tomb. They're going to divide lots for his clothing, and it'll be mixed. He'll be spat on, he'll be mocked, whipped, he was pierced for transgressions, wounded for our iniquities. It's all in Psalm 53, it's in um, Psalm 22 as well. Yeah, yeah. And Isaiah, sorry, Isaiah, Isaiah 53 in Psalm 22. That's right. Uh, so if you, look in the, if you look in Zechariah as well, I think it's Zechariah 12, it says they will look upon the one whom they have pierced, Jehovah God. So God came. In Jesus Christ to be pierced for our transgressions to be our saviour. Jesus Christ wow. is God in the flesh. Amen. The Old Testament is just full of it. You just got to you just got to go back and look at it in context and really mm -hmm. be honest uh, rather than attack the Bible. But learn the Bible. Amen. Amen. So I just want to say this last thing. The apostle wrote, "For I have delivered to you first of all." That which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, but he rose again on the third day to, uh, in the, uh, to the scriptures. Paul, as well as the other apostles of Jesus, with the exception of John, were so convinced of the death and resurrection of Jesus that they were willing to die as martyrs than recant his testimony. Many men are willing to die for something they believe to be true. But no man is willing to die for that which he knows to be a lie. Exactly, yeah. So, any thoughts about that, brother, before we finish? So, while uh, the disciples were, were martyred for the faith, um, Jesus even told Peter that he was going to die. Jesus even said to Peter, said, they will take you to a place where you do not want to go and you will open up your arms wide, meaning he's going to be crucified. Peter, um, when he's approaching death, I think it's in one of his epistles, talks about that. He says, the Lord Jesus told me about this. Mm. Um, why would, why would the disciples, for a one big hoax and a lie, put their lives on the line for this? Why would they do it? Mm. And I'm convinced of this. The Bible says if one died for one, if one died, one died for all, and that's the attitude of the disciples. He died for all, and they knew who Jesus Christ was. And there's, there's no way it was a hoax or anything like that. It actually happened. Yeah. It's a supernatural event. And, and it happened because in John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And we've just examined the evidence for the crucifixion of our Lord, and the evidence is overwhelming, and the Quran cannot stand up to this overwhelming evidence. And so as Muslims you need to realize that what we're telling you is the truth, and that we're telling you out of love to come to Jesus, give your life to Jesus, examine the evidence. And we are showing you fair, solid, historical data that just demolishes the Quran. And you need to study that and look at the evidence. Do you want to say one last word before we finish? Yeah, uh, if the Quran is the final revelation of God, why does it not, um, how can it, when it's challenged and put under the microscope, it doesn't, it runs away or it gets angry or aggressive. Why can't it stand up to scrutiny? If it's the word of God, it will stand. Okay, yeah. the Bible's been attacked for many generations, and it stands every time. It's only people that twist it and don't look at it in context that think yeah. it's a load of nonsense. But when you look at it in context, you'll find it's the truth. When you look at the Quran in context, it falls apart because the context does not fit what it's trying to say. It doesn't fit history. It doesn't fit anything. Amen. Amen. So come to Jesus. Don't waste your time on the Quran. It's it's, it's just it's useless. Amen. You're not going to be spiritually fed. You'll be fed lies and Amen. you just grow angry and bitter. And you, you need the Lord's peace. Christ died. The reason why he died is he took the punishment for your sin. He died in your place. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And the reason why Christ died on that cross is he died to take away your sin. He died in your place. And that is the only way for salvation. Read Isaiah 53, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. And it's only by Christ can you be saved, my friend. And so we ask you, we invite you to heaven. 
by Jesus Christ. God bless you. And thank you for listening. Don't forget, you can, you can look at us at Royal Blood Ministries. We have a YouTube, we have Twitter, and we have Facebook. Also, you can look at jasonburstpreacher.com. We also have a website for Royal Blood Ministries. We have a website, and we, we, we have multimedia. So look us up. You'll find us. Uh, look at my website and Twitter, Jason Burns. Uh, Preacher Twitter and um, uh, my Facebook and also Royal Blood Facebook and Royal Blood Twitter and Royal Blood Ministries Twitter and Facebook and website. God bless you and thank you for listening. Do you want to say one last word and then we'll... Yeah, we, we just urge you please bow the knee to Jesus Christ because one day the Bible says all will bow to the knee to Christ and all will confess. I confess now, I just ask you to do the same. God bless.